All right, let's return to our uh, top story now, the Iranian missile attack on uh, bases that house U.S. troops in Iraq. We have Tyson Barker from the Aspen Institute with us here in our studio. And uh, Tyson, we're also waiting for the U.S. president to give a statement on what has happened. These are live pictures right now from the White House. President Trump is expected to comment uh, at any moment now. We will be listening into that statement uh, as soon as we see the president get up and ready to speak there. Uh, Tyson, all we have to go on right now is the tweet that we saw that, that essentially was uh, sent out after the Iranian missile attacks where we saw the president say all is well, that there's an assessment of casualties taking place so far, so good. What did you make of that initial uh, tweet from the president? Well, initially, I, I, I saw it as a very narrow kind of assessment of the situation at these bases. Uh, the Pentagon has since come out and said that they had, they were aware that these bases were on a target list uh, and had made uh, uh, plans accordingly. So perhaps there was some kind of intermediary signaling between Iran and the United States to move out uh, troops that would be deployed at these bases. Uh, as has been noted by many analysts, this mm -hmm could have been more signaling uh, than anything else on behalf of Iran, that they are retaliating. I'm, obviously, these missiles did come from Iranian territory as opposed to uh, a proxy force or militias. So they don't have plausible deniability. They are taking credit for these attacks. So clearly, they want to be seen as delivering a retaliatory blow, at least to their public, if not internationally. Um, beyond that, in Washington right now, we've had some signals from Republican senators who have come out and said that this is the time to de-escalate escalate, including uh, Lindsey Graham, who is a close ally of the president. So them saying a close ally like Lindsey Graham, a real hawk, a real internationalist who's kind of watching uh, the U.S. defense policy globally, to come out and say, you know, now is the time to take a step back and assess these and come up with an Iraq or an Iran strategy is, is pretty telling, I think, because clearly he's somebody who's coordinating closely with the White House. And if there was indeed signaling, as you said, many analysts have, uh, have said that that could have been the case. That would also underline that point that perhaps the Iranians and the Americans are not really looking to escalate the situation any further. Right, at least not militarily. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there are a lot of uh, tools that both sides have on the table at their disposal. The United States has, of course, uh, massive economic leverage that it can come into play, not only with Iran, but also with Iraq, as the president said over the weekend. Uh, and Iran has a lot of political leverage in Iraq itself. And, you know, some indications from government officials has been that their ultimate aim as a retaliatory measure is not a military retaliation, but a political retaliation, i.e. trying to drive U.S. presence out of Iraq. The U.S. also, as we know, has a massive presence in Iraq. Talk to us about these two bases, how significant they were for the U.S. Well, uh, as has been noted, you know, these, the, the U.S. has a lot of presence in the region. It has the Fifth Fleet, which is a major, major uh, deployment in uh, uh, in the Strait of Hormuz. It has a lot of presence in Saudi Arabia. The U.S. right now has about 5,000 troops in Iraq, and the purpose of those troops after the withdrawal of Iraqi troops under the Obama administration is primarily uh, to lead operations in the anti-ISIS coalition. Um, the presence in Erbil, you know, that is kind of a U.S., uh, for a long time, a U.S. stronghold because it's, it's right at the heart of uh, Kurdish territory in Iraq, and those have been traditionally the the greatest allies of the Americans in, in Iraq in particular. Uh, the other base is in the middle of the Sunni Triangle. So that's kind of an area that, uh, if we were talking 15 years ago, was a real source of anxiety because mm. that's really where a lot of the insurgency after Saddam Hussein was kind of arising. Now that role has kind of flipped, and we saw that a little bit in the vote in parliament uh, in Iraq and Baghdad, where all the Shia members were the ones who were voting for the expulsion of, of American troops yeah. In this non-binding uh, resolution, and the Sunnis and the um, and the Kurds didn't participate. So um, it is it's more symbolic than anything else. There is a, a lighter footprint than if we were having this conversation, say, eight years ago. Um, but uh, you know, these are still important bases. As we're waiting for the president to give, deliver a statement there at the White House, remind us of what brought us to this point, Tyson. I mean, this really has been, you know, the simmering enmity between I Iran and, and the U.S. that led up to this, first of all, the uh, strike that killed General Soleimani and then these Iran missile strikes in retaliation. Right. Well, I mean, the Trump administration has taken a very strident anti-Iran line since it came into office in 2017. And this was a real pivot away from the Obama administration's attempt to uh, reincorporate Iran into the international community 
Treaty, first and foremost through the Iran nuclear deal, which it uh, negotiated with uh, five other uh, major powers to try to get Iran to step away from its pursuit of a nuclear uh, a nuclear weapon capability. Um, obviously, President Trump uh, tore up that deal, at least uh, from the side of the United States. Other powers, including the European powers, have, have made a play to preserve that uh, deal by providing workarounds for, for sanctions that have been leveraged by the United States, including secondary sanctions on those from Europe or other places that would want to do business with, with Iran. Um, and then, you know, it's just been a tit-for-tat kind of slow escalation since the summer. I mean, we saw, first of all, the saber-rattling around the Strait of Hormuz in August, which is the uh, passage for about a third of the world's uh, sea-bearing oil supplies. Um, we saw, uh, obviously, this attack on December 27th, which was a major, uh, I think, uh, impetus for this attack against Soleimani, which killed one American. Um, and, you know, there's just been a lot of saber rattling generally. So uh, the, the line that the U.S. government was giving, at least this morning, was, you know, this isn't necessarily a response to one incident, but it's accumulation of Soleimani's kind of mischief in the region that has ultimately led to, in their, in their words, in the past decade, 600 American deaths. Okay, well, for our viewers just joining us, the pictures there you see on the right-hand uh, side of your screen there, we're waiting for U.S. President Donald Trump to deliver his first uh, public statement following the Iranian missile strikes uh, on military bases in Iraq that house U.S. troops. He did tweet earlier just after those military strikes, but we're, th this would be his uh, first public statement, all eyes on the White House right now, particularly also in Iran, to see whether the situation escalates further or not. And Tyson, you know, in Washington itself, this has been a huge uh, source of of, of contention as well. The original strike to take out the general uh, Soleimani that has really divided Democrats and Republicans uh, as well. Yeah, it has. And, and you know, one of the first divisions is really on process because I think when it comes to national security, no matter who is president, uh, Congress, Washington elected officials are willing to give uh, the president a wide berth and the Pentagon a wide berth, a lot of a goodwill credibility if they make their case. So there are uh, traditional processes, pre-briefing, closed-door briefings, particularly among the Gang of Eight, you know, those who are really involved in intelligence, they're very trusted members of Congress, the chairman of of select committees on intelligence to make sure that there is a case to be made for this kind of, uh, you know, meaningful uh, operation. And the, this this White House did not make any pre uh, uh, any case to Congress pre the attack. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and others were not notified. There has been a lot made of that. According to the War Powers Act, there would need to be a notification within 48 hours. The president did make that notification over the weekend, and the White House seems to be kind of at least learning from that uh, process foul in some ways that they've said, we're going to be much more active in briefing in Congress in the future. Uh, the Vice President, Vice President Pence was up there briefing Nancy Pelosi, I believe, today or yesterday. Um, so they are trying to kind of incorporate uh, Congress more into understanding what the dynamic is in the region. Republicans have also not been completely clear on what the position is. And even within, let's say, the conservative, the broader conservative um, community, there has been a lot of criticism of this attack. Uh, Tucker Carlson, who is a, a Fox News commentator, a somebody who definitely has the president's ear, has been extremely critical of this attack, as has Rand Paul, so uh, a, a libertarian uh, senator from Kentucky. So uh, there is division among Republicans as to whether or not this was warranted. Um, I think it's also important to add one more element, which I forgot to mention, which is uh, the Saudi Arabia aspect. Mm. Um, there were officials from Saudi Arabia uh, visiting the White House, meeting with the president unplanned in the past couple of days. Uh, and Saudi Arabia has also been a, um, a, uh, a target of attack from the Iranians in this, in this fall. As you will recall, uh, the Iranians attacked two oil refineries in Saudi Arabia, knocking out about 5% of the world's uh, global energy supply. So, you know, the close relationship, particularly with the Trump administration and Saudi Arabia, is also something that they're probably bringing into the calculation. All right, really important context there, Tyson.